Breakdown is presented by John's Sewer and Drain Cleaning, the name to know when the drains don't flow. Welcome into the breakdown, Patriots fans. You're recovering from a regular season finale. We've got you covered here on the finale of the breakdown. I'm Phil Perry. That's Ted Johnson. Ted, worst record since 1992. I had this team as a 9 or 10 win team before the season, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. I did not see this coming. Did you? I didn't see this coming, honestly, Phil. Really, I thought the offense would be a little, a lot better than what it was considering Bill O'Brien was coming in here. I thought the buy-in would be better than it was considering how the season ended last year. To see where they are at this point with, uh, you know, Bill Belichick's job in question going forward, I never thought it would get to this point, and here we are. Well, if you're looking for one reason why the Patriots won just four games this season, turnovers, huge story this year. After going 14 straight years without turning it over more than 22 times the Patriots turn back the clock to a different era of football committing at least 23 turnovers in each of the last three years their 29 giveaways this season their most ever under Bill Belichick it's time now for board games brought to you by John Sewer and drain cleaning the name to know when the drains don't flow turnovers 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 Ted it's been the story of the 2023 season for the Patriots we're gonna break one of them down here you've got tip drill written at the top of the board. Sounds like something you might have done in Patriots practices past, buddy. Oh, many, many times I have, Phil, all right? So tip drills is something we do in practice where, you know, guys tip the ball up, and then the secondary guy comes in and makes the interception. And this is what's been happening to Bailey Zappi in the Patriots offense. A lot of tip balls and interceptions Bailey's throwing on these short to intermediate passes because defensive backs are getting their hands in there, tipping the ball up, and guys are making plays. And so that's why we have tip drill right here. So this is a second and nine situation late in the, uh, in the fourth quarter, just a little over two minutes to go, all right? And the Patriots are trying to get back on track. It's a down and distance of second and nine. That's kind of your get back on track uh, down and distance where you, you're trying to get a chunk play here to get a third and, and manageable kind of uh, third down, okay? So what are the tip for the Jets that it's going to be a pass? Clearly is when a team comes out and empty like the Patriots did. You come out and empty. Really the only run threat is maybe a quarterback draw. Not really real threat. And so feels like it's going to be a, a pass besides just the down and distance, also coming out empty. So this is what the, uh, the Patriots run, okay? Uh, on this side, the three-man side, they just run a couple of out routes here with a clearing route by Zeke Elliott. Um, and on this side, we have two slant routes uh, from the two-man two side right here, okay? This is Demario Douglas. He was the intended receiver. If Bailey Zappi had the confidence and the time and his offensive line and was, you know, maybe just a little bit more advanced than the offense, he maybe would have surveyed the field a little bit longer instead of just locking in on the left side like he did and found Keyshawn Booty, who was open on this play. But nonetheless, he went to the left side on this play. And in this uh, coverage, the Jets were playing Tampa 2. Tampa 2 is where the middle linebacker, he goes to the middle of the field, the two safeties, the half field safeties on this, and everyone's playing hook, hook, uh, hook to flat, hook to flat, and then, uh, and then uh, playing soft on the outside. Here's what you have for Bailey Zappi. If you're going to throw this ball into a uh, coverage that's got eight guys dropping, so the, the Jets only rush three guys right here. They rush these three linemen, and they drop this D lineman. So there's eight guys flooding the zone on only three rushers. And so if you're going to try and squeeze a ball into a coverage that has eight guys dropping, the, the timing and precision has to be there. And these two haven't worked well uh, long enough together to get that timing down, and the field conditions were so bad. Nonetheless, they tried it anyway. He throws the ball. This defensive back right here really was never fooled on this. It's really hard to cut on those conditions. He was right on the guy's inside hip right here. He tips the ball as the ball gets to him, tips it to Tony Adams, the safety, who's squatting. These safeties did not open up like you typically do in cover two because the conditions are so bad and the footing so bad. They knew that they just stay condensed and something maybe uh, good will happen, and it certainly did. Bailey Zappi has to do a better job of getting the ball out on time and more accurately. Um, and really, the defense, uh, the, the uh, wide receiver has to get his head around quicker than he did. Those things didn't happen. They were able to get their hands in there, tip the ball. And this is a theme that's been reoccurring for the Patriots the offense the last few weeks. These short to intermediate routes, teams are squatting on them, tipping the ball, and getting interceptions. Bailey Zappi's thrown nine interceptions to his six touchdowns this year, Phil. Predictable offense, Ted. When you don't have a lot of threats to beat the defense deep, you're in conditions like they were in on Sunday. You got to throw it short. The Jets were expecting it. Bailey Zappi, the lowest rated quarterback in football, Ted, on throws zero to nine yards. 
beyond the line of scrimmage, oh. just 60.5. Bailey Zappi's first few games as a starter were a Cinderella story. He's kind of turned into a pumpkin yeah, after throwing six touchdowns and just two picks in his first four games as the Pats starter. Zappi's last two games were a different story. No touchdowns, five picks. So, does he think that he has earned himself a chance to remain a starting quarterback in the NFL, Bailey? I mean, yeah, of course. Um, you know, I have the confidence myself to know that I think I can go out there and lead a team and win games. Um, of course, I don't want to be here. I want to. I mean, I've always dreamed of playing in the NFL, and of course, I want to be a Patriot. Um, so, whatever is the side of this offseason, I'll be ready for training camp, and I'll come to compete and do everything I can to help this team win. And hopefully, that's a starter, and you know, hopefully, we can win. Ted, is Bailey Zappi a part of the Patriots quarterback room next year? I love the confidence, my man. Uh, that's my Texan buddy right there. Uh, Phil, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about him being part of the future in this quarterback room just because if they go out and draft a guy high in the first round like we all anticipate the Patriots doing, doing – I just don't know if his personality type is the best to have in that quarterback room because he clearly thinks he's a starter, and that could be combustible with a young kid who's clearly the heir apparent. And so I just, I'm not sure how that's going to work with him on a roster. And I also get back to something that we don't often talk about with Bailey Zappi. It's just his size, Ted. You know, we're talking about another short interception there. He had five interceptions this year, throwing zero to nine yards beyond the line of scrimmage. I wonder if his height just makes it difficult for him to see the field. And it's okay if you're a scrambling quarterback, if you're a great athlete, you can be a little undersized and get by. Kyler Murray, for instance. That's not Zappi's game. So I wonder if they view him long-term, if somebody like Bill O'Brien, who might be back next year, if they view him as a long-term backup option in this it's offense. It's probably probably not, but does he have a role on a team somewhere? Yes, he's probably one of the top 70 or 80 quarterbacks in the NFL. But to be a starter and depend on him, I'm not so sure about that. And a big part of it is because of the size. He doesn't see, I don't think, the defenders that are there you know, on the inside hip of these wide receivers. And I just think those linemen, I think, cover up. And so he doesn't have clear path and vision to these receivers in the short to intermediate areas. I think he's starting fresh. Maybe Bailey Zapp, Zappi's back as a two or three, but you're probably going with a young guy. Mac Jones probably going to end up somewhere else. Be fascinating to see what the Patriots do at the quarterback position moving forward. Hey, be sure to download the NBC Sports Boston app. It has the latest news, analysis, and commentary from all of our insiders. You can scan the QR code on the screen right now or go to the App Store or Google Play. Up next, the Patriots run defense had been one of the best in the league until Brees Hall came to town. What went wrong for New England when the breakdown returns? Like I said, it is what it is, man. From man to man, we know we didn't do what we had to do this year. That don't mean we didn't work hard. That don't mean we didn't come in week in and week out expecting and planning to win. We just didn't execute the ball, didn't roll our way. So, you know, from man to man, we got to win that. Ted, I said off the top of the show, I was surprised by the team's overall record. I was also surprised by the outcome yesterday. You're in the snow. You're against the Jets and Trevor Simeon. That's a bad Jets team. I'm just so used to them beating up on the Jets, especially at home, especially beating up on a bad team in the snow. That's usually where the Patriots thrive, and yet – we saw the result yesterday that we saw. Phil, the Patriots are 12-0 and in snow games at home. They've beaten the Jets 15 straight times. Bill Belichick's potentially last game of his career here, and that was the effort that you saw. I was very disappointed. I thought it would go a lot differently than it did. I thought the Patriots were going to win handedly. That was not the case at all. No surprise here. The, the grades on the report card. Not good. Not good. Not fridge-worthy, exactly. My report card, of course, is presented by the Massachusetts School of Law. We already talked about Bailey Zappi. Not much of a surprise. He received an F. Hard to get anything better than that when you don't exceed 100 yards passing. He's joined by his offensive line with a failing grade. Seven sacks. Brutal day. Once again, the Patriots' offense leaving it in the hands of their defense to try to win the game. The defense just wasn't good enough. For more, let's go back to the drawing board. We're back out here for board games brought to you by John Sewer and Drain Cleaning. The name to know when the drains don't flow. A lot of issues for this Patriots defense, Ted, against the run on Sunday. You've got living on the edge written at the top of the board. Makes me feel like we're going to be focusing on one of these pass rushers on the outside who might have to play 
against the run. Yeah, absolutely. So this is uh, we're going to focus on on the edges here. Okay, the the, uh, the the Jets did a good job of getting free yards on the outside. Um, in, the, in the Patriots outside linebackers didn't do a good enough job of setting the edge, turning the ball back inside where their help is, okay? So if you're a Patriots defensive player, Phil, and you're looking at this formation on the offense, what side looks like it's the running strength to you? What side of the field? I would guess this side because the tight end is on the right side of the You'd be correct, okay. Phil. Good job, my man. All right, very good. I'm rubbing off on you. I love it. All right. Um, so it's it's the tight end side is usually the set strength side for teams. You see two wide receivers over here. It just looks like here's all the bodies over here. It looks like this is the run string. But what teams love to do, the Colts used to do this with Peyton Manning and Edron James. They like to try and run to the open side, to the side that doesn't have the tight end um, uh, because there's less people to that side. And if you can just get one block – uh, on this play, then you have uh, a shot of, of getting a big a big run here. And so this is what happened. So this was a minimal gain. It was about a 12-yard gain, but this set up the first uh, field goal for the, for the Jets. And it goes to show you maybe some of the problems you have with this particular player, Josh Uche, who is a, a gifted pass rusher, but really, really has had issues since he's been here in New England stopping the run and setting the edge. So what you have right here is you have a basically a stretch play. So these, all these linemen are going to be hard, flat, going to the left right here, and they, it just, it's a, they just do the RPO handoff right here, the quarterback to Brees Hall right here, who was a beast. Oh my gosh, this guy's a beast. So it's all this stretch zone run play to the open side. Okay, all these guys are coming up here, shooting the gaps. All these inside gaps are filled. Nothing's going on over here. It's all over here because if the numbers favor the Jets on this side, if they can get one block, and that one block is Mackay Becton, big old 77. His job is to reach and hook the outside linebacker to get the room space needed for Brees Hall. You have the wide receiver clearing out Jonathan Jones there in cover one, so it's man-to-man. -man. So John Jones turns his back and starts running. So there's all this space out here. Mekhi Becton does a great job of reaching out here and sealing uh, Josh Uche so that Brees Hall has a clear run and lane to hit. He gets a 12-yard gain, sets up the, uh, the field goal. But this play, even though it was just a 12-yard gain, kind of exemplifies Maybe the issues with this one player, do you bring him back, do you not bring him back? He's a good pass rusher. He's not a great pass rusher, but his run defense skills have kind of lacked. I haven't seen him gotten better over the years that he's been here. And this one play was kind of indicative of the problems the Patriots defense had all game stopping the run. Watch out. This Brees Hall is a bowling ball of butcher knives. He's a hell of a player, Phil. Special, special athlete at the running back position for the Jets. And Josh Uche, special athlete himself. 11 and a half sacks last year, but just three this year and some obvious issues against the run game. Now, how much of a beast was Brees Hall exactly? A whopping 37 carries for 178 yards by far. The most the Patriots have given up to any back this season. Raheem Mostert, back in week two, was the only other rusher this season to gain more than 80 yards on the ground against the Patriots. And this brings us to our Ted Neek. Ted Neek, of course, presented by Shaw's, which is perfecting the art of fresh. And Ted, I know you wanted to get down and dirty on the nitty gritty of something you loved to do and still love to do to me occasionally here on set, and that is tackling because there were a few moments in this game where Brees Hall was able to pick up chunk gains because he forced a missed tackle. How did he do it? And what could the Patriots have done to better execute in those situations? Yeah, just, uh, you know, Brees Hall, get ready, Patriots fans, because this guy is a hell of a player for the Jets, and he really showed me a lot in, in this game. And what he was doing, I mean, you see the Patriots defenders, they get close to him. I mean, there's bodies around him. He does a phenomenal job of getting separation and exploding out of his cuts and then also using his forearm. And dare I say he kind of reminds me of my former teammate and Hall of Famer, Curtis Smartin, Ooh. okay? High Curtis praise. Martin, High uh, praise. He was so good at when he would, you know, start throttling down and then cut and, and turn. His separation and explosiveness was so much better than any other running backs that you would think you would have him because you'd be right there, and then he's gone. So, Brees Hall has similar qualities. And so, this is what he did a lot throughout the game, is you would see a Patriots defender, and I'll just, I'm going to show you his stiff arm first. So, he, a Patriots defender would come up, Juwan Bentley, the defensive backs, they come up, and here's the thing. They think they're going to come in there and make a big lick. 
boom, you see Brees Hall just put that stiff arm out there. You hit the shoulder. You'd see him sometimes. No, no. Boom. And that's just that stiff arm right there is enough to get the defender off balance, and then he could go right by him. He would get under the chin, all right? And it's very hard to make a tackle when your head's getting jacked backwards. So in the Be shoulder, careful. It's under a money, the chin. Money maker here, okay? <laughs> go easy. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. And then what, what the Patriots defenders needed to do better, Phil, is they needed to figure out, you know what? We're not going to get him down by trying to run through him. When they get close, what I would tell my defenders, leave, the, leave your feet. Go off the jump uh, diving board. Leave your feet and go low and get him that way as opposed to trying to take him up high because he's so good at getting using a stiff arm and getting separation. The Patriots defenders didn't do that. Brees Hall had big explosive runs. This guy is going to be a handful for this defense to deal with the next five, six years. Patriots fans hated seeing Curtis Martin with the Jets, Ted. Oh, yeah. I don't think they're going to enjoy watching Brees Hall with the Jets over the course of the next few years. All right. Tuesday, 6 o'clock, tune in for Quick Slants. Tommy Kern sharing his takes, as always, on the Patriots now that their season is done. It's presented by your local New England Honda dealer. Still to come, who's in, who's out? Ted Johnson throws on his general manager hat for a little Monday night spotlight when the breakdown returns. It's time for Monday Night Spotlight, which is presented by TouchView Interactive Display Panels, available at the Oakers Company. Here's a look at the most notable Patriots free agents. Hunter Henry, Trent Brown, Kendrick Bourne, Michael Wenu, Josh Uche, and Kyle Duggar, among the most notable names on this list. So, General Manager, Ted Johnson, among those names, who are the priorities for you? Uh, I would say the two guys on offense, go sign Mike Onwenu. He's been excellent for you ever since you drafted him. And then also Kendrick Bourne. I love his attitude and his, his uh, skill set. And then on the other side, you know what? Keep Kyle Duggar. I think that guy is a beast. He's a little bit of a liability sometimes in the pass coverage, but he's just a hell of a, a, a tackler and I think a good leader on this team. And then also Anthony Jennings. I think he's earned a second contract with the Patriots with the way he's played this year. Sort of an under-the-radar free agent, but he's another one of those 2020 draft picks that the Patriots picked up and had a career year this year, so good for him on that front. I would add one more name to that list. I'd add Hunter Henry. I think Hunter Henry this year as a captain, he really embraced that role. Plus the tight end position, really difficult one to fill with a rookie. So maybe you draft one for the future there, but you might want the placeholder in Hunter Henry, who still is a borderline top 10 tight end in this league. Bring him back, help establish whatever's happening moving forward in terms of the culture here, because I think he was a good fit in that regard. Now, in terms of maybe outside additions, Ted, we know the Patriots have holes to fill. But where are you going first positionally? I would say needs one, two, and three. All start with a left tackle. Please, please, please give me a left tackle. All right. You're not going quarterback, though. Uh, okay. Well, yes. Okay. All right. See, now yes. we're, we're drawing it out of here. All right. We're drawing yes, it quarterback. Out of here. Should okay. be number one. I guess, but, you know, we need a left tackle to block for the quarterback because, you know, the offensive line, I think, maybe ruined our young quarterbacks. But, yes, I'm sorry. Quarterback, of course, and then left tackle. That's Those would be the first two uh, positions I'd, I'd go at. And then, clearly, you need to upgrade the receiver depth on this on this team. And then if Hunter Henry doesn't resign, we need a t- uh, tight end as well. A lot of needs. A lot of needs. And, listen, the left tackle spot, you're not wrong for trying to prioritize it, it's really difficult to try to find good ones who are also available in free agency because typically if you've got one, you hold on to them and you never let go. Uh, we may have a little uh, – Ted, I, I know this, this is a very smooth operation that we have here, but it sounds to me like we have a blooper reel here, which I haven't seen. We're going to throw that to the people right now. Have some fun with this. All right, here we go. Ready? Yes. Okay. Three, two, one. We got to make up for the lack of energy that they are bringing to the table. Whew. It's a lot of responsibility on us, but I think we can do it. Yeah. Smelling salts. The reactions ah. are so, yeah, it's like, ah! Ah! Wow, <laughs> Stings the nostrils. Um, um, of the, uh, <laughs> the Raiders! It can be, ah! Oh. Sorry, sorry, okay. sorry, 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 okay. sorry, sorry. You, you. Worst old one. And that's my one. That's, uh, ah! Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> it felt like I was in this, like, zone thing, and I was just talking. And, oh, you uh, were great. Man, I was, I was you like. You black out a little bit? That was awesome. <laughs> Makes a tremendous inner. St- oh. God, you stink. That's just too much words. Too much words. Too many words. Deep down the middle of the field. Chow- 
just shut up, Phil. Alex Austin, rookie. Too much talking already. Just need a word counter. <laughs> we should do the uh, McConaughey thing before every. Uh... All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rolling. 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 What? Yeah. It's just one of them days. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. You have ah. Push it. Ah. Push it. Written at the top of the board. Explain why. More Bailey Zappy here. Zappy holidays. I mean, I, that was bad. That was, bad. That was pitchy. That was pitchy. That was pitchy. <laughs> Zappy holidays. Zappy holidays. There we go. Let's break it down, though. It's good for bloop, the blooper reel. All right, it's time now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Way to go. Both in the midst. Yeah. I like where you started, though. That's good. Ah, all right. I right. took one on the chin there, right? <laughs> took one on the chin, but we're gonna, we're not gonna. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh. Shit. I love it. <laughs> Okay, now I'm, uh, now I'm a little wobbly. <laughs> now I'm wobbly. You got a rookie mistake on one end, a veteran making a critical mistake, another critical mistake by Mac Jones there in the second half. I'm Ron Burgundy. That was, that was horrible. Let's go! Woo! Good job, Phil. Good Please. job, buddy. How do we make it through any program here? Ted, thank you for, for bearing with me in the ridiculousness. My man, you keep it loose, show. you keep it light. We have a lot of fun doing the show. We Phil. do. Thanks to you. Thanks to Jeff Garcia, our floor director, Jib Up producer, Steve Hamblin, Ryan Preventure, Kevin Ducharme, Adam Harp, Ryan O'Neill, Kevin Miller. We love you, and thanks for watching all season.